Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's Marcellus back with another video. We got to talk about Baby Doge because there's something very important happening with the charts here with Baby Doge. So definitely stick around to the end. Go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you like these Baby Doge videos. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you all want me to go over next. And also, if you want to become a member of the channel, definitely go ahead and do that. I'll go over any crypto that the members want me to go over next. And remember, if it's not your keys, it's not your crypto. Definitely check out the Ledger Nano wallet inside of the description. Let's get straight to it. So the first thing I want to talk about here is the technical analysis with Baby Doge. And you can actually see how it's forming up right now. So yeah, I believed that we would at least get to the top of this consolidation phase before we actually broke down and went to the support. But now look, we're actually about to break down below this trend line. And when I talk about the consolidation, you can actually see the whole thing here on the four hour chart. So look at how we're consolidating here on Baby Doge. And we've been doing this, you know, for a pretty good time since May. And now it's kind of starting to break out of this consolidation phase now. So hopefully when it breaks out, it doesn't break out too far on the downside because I was predicting it to actually go down and actually hit the support. But I was predicting it to first at least go up here to this trend line and then go down to the support. But now what it's kind of looking like is that we're going to come out of this on the downside and just go straight to the support instead of going up here to hit the top of the trend line again. So yeah, we're still consolidating, but you know, a little bit of a change inside the direction, you know, we're pretty much going to go down here to the support. Now, look, if we do this, let me go back over here to the 15M chart or, or the 15 minute chart. But yeah, look, if we do this, if we go down to the support line, then what you're going to see next for Baby Doge, we may actually have enough momentum to go back up if we hit that support and we don't go too down too far down below it now if you see over here the 24 hour market control is still in control by the bears by 80 percent, so we are still 80 percent bearish but i also noticed something with the chart right here so you can actually see it is still riding this trend line so we haven't broken down below it yet we're still riding on this trend line it looks like it wants to stay above it and you can see like it's struggling to stay above it but look if this doesn't turn green now and we don't get more buying then what's going to happen, you're going to see Baby Doge break down below the, con the consolidation trend line. And yeah, that support that I was talking about, it's all the way down here at 1250. Um, It's not actually too bad right now because we're at 1362. So even if we go all the way down to 1250, it's really not that big of a deal. But we don't want to go below 1250. That's pretty much what I'm trying to get across here. You do not want to go below 1250. If we go below 1250, then the next support, we already know we're about to add on another zero. And I know a lot of people don't want to do that. But anyways, we do still have that resistance up here for Baby Doge. And that resistance is all the way up here at um, 1425, 8Z1425, 8 8Z you want to say that. But yeah, that's where our next resistance is pretty much at here with Baby Doge. So we need to try to get back above it. We were trying to over here on the 7th and the 8th. Couldn't get back above it. We we're trying to way back here too. Still couldn't get above that trend line so or that um resistance so i think what's about to happen now with baby doge i think we are actually about to break down below this trend line so prepare for it it's about to happen soon and i don't know if we're going to go all the way down to that 1250 support before we start pumping up to our next levels but hey whatever happens happens but it definitely looks like we're going to be breaking down below that so definitely prepare for that now looking at the four hour chart for a little bit here we are seeing that we have some selling pressure going on but it doesn't look like the selling pressure is done yet because typically the selling pressure looks more so like this. That's a lot more selling pressure than what we have right now. And you can see this is pretty much just the beginning of what our selling pressure is about to do. So this is just the beginning. Now, what happens after we start selling out? I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but 1250, let's talk about what will come next after the 1250 support. So we got to talk about this. So we got to predict where we're going to be going next after this. So look, I'm going to give you the bear scenario and then I'm going to give you the bullish scenario after this. So First things first, let's talk about the bearish scenario. If we are bearish after this breaks down below the 1250 support, if we go down below this 1250 support, we hit it and we decide not to try to retest our previous highs and we just go boom and we go down here, then what you're going to see for Baby Doge is this support right here. And this support is at the 1100 area. So that first support after 1250 is 1100. And you can tell that because we actually had support back here in uh, what day was this? 18th of June. Yeah. 18th and 19th of June. That's where we actually had the same support at. So there was pretty much good support over there. And you can see over here, the supply and demand it shows that there was more demand in this area. The green areas are supply and demand of more demand. And then the red area is supply and demand of less demand. So I look at the green areas as support and I look at the red areas over here as resistance. So 
Now what you're seeing with the baby doge, our green areas that we had previously was down here at 1100. So that's why our next support is going to be at 1100. So you want to prepare for that. Now that's where we are supposed to go for our next support. Now, remember, there's still more support lines than meet down here. So the next thing that you want to look at is the support down here. There's also support at the 1000 area, and that's um, pretty much at 8Z1. Now, we also have more support at the bottom of the supply and demand area, and that is about 9Z8 or 9Z9, really. So somewhere around 9Z9, that's where our next um, support is going to be pretty much. So we have these three support lines. And then from there, we don't really have to talk about what comes next because we already know we had support down here at the 13th of May. We had at 9Z75. So I don't think it's going to go down that low. That's why I didn't even want to mention it. But what I think, I think we're probably going to break down to this 1250. And I think we're probably going to end up going down to the 1100 and then trying to pump back above 750. And it, or I mean 1250. If we go down to 1100 and then we try to pump back up to 1250, we could actually build enough momentum to get past it and then become bullish again. So that's what I'm looking towards here. Now, if we continue to go down, then I don't know what's gonna, I don't know what it's gonna do to get past that. But anyways, whenever you look at the 24-hour market control for the four-hour chart, which is the long-term chart, you see it's still 60% bullish when you look at it from a long-term chart and a long-term perspective. And then when you go over here and you look at it from the 15M chart. The 15M chart shows you something uh, slightly different. Let it load up here. Yeah, it shows you a 80% bearish for the 24-hour market control compared to the 60% bullish when you look at it from the long term. So short term, we are bearish short term, and that's what you're seeing here. We're having really, a uh, really hard time trying to stay above this trend line, and we're really struggling. So you're probably going to see it sell out some more. So definitely prepare for that. Now, also, I want to show with Bitcoin as well because you can see here, um, if you look at my video from yesterday, the day before that, all that good stuff, then you'll see what I was talking about with Bitcoin. I was like, look, this next support is probably going to happen if we don't become bullish. We didn't become bullish. We weren't able to break past this resistance up here. I mentioned this resistance at 21.8K. We weren't able to pass 21.8K, and that's why we got rejected here. And as we got rejected, boom, this is what you've seen. And if you watched my video from yesterday, it was like right around this area. And then I was like, look. We're probably not going to even be able to go all the way up from here. We're probably not because we're starting to top up early, or top out early. And then around here, that's when I would make the prediction talking about how we were going to go down to the support here. And this support is pretty much at 20.7K. And that's exactly what we did. We hit the 20.7K 20, 20, the 20 support because remember, green area, supply and demand of more demand. So we hit this more demand area where the support is. So we hit this 20.7K support. And now we're going up again from bitcoin but look we are overbought so i want to make another prediction here and remember i'm not a financial advisor none of this is financial advice but here's my next prediction we are overbought here yes we hit the support but as we hit that support people seem to buy the dip opportunity those people bought now those same people are going to start selling out right now now that they got their profit you got to think they just now went from 20.7k all the way up to 21.1k that's enough for um maybe their rent or whatever but yeah look people are going to end up taking this and they're going to sell so yeah, they were making that profit and then they're probably going to sell Bitcoin really soon. And you're already seeing it happening right now. So look, we were overbought, but you see how that buying wave started to go down. Yeah. Now it's about to go all the way down to the bottom and then you're going to see selling come. So now what we're probably going to see is Bitcoin's probably going to end up stopping around 21.2K, which is right here. And that's actually where we got that huge red candlestick, which is probably why we're about to have that as the stopping point for Bitcoin. That's why we're still having some purchasing going on in this purchasing wave. So what you're going to see is us going back down to the support over here at 20.7K. Now, if it sells off hard enough and if they like sell a lot of Bitcoin, then what you're going to see next is Bitcoin going back down to this area, which is 20.4K. So prepare for that to happen soon. I don't know when, but I know it's probably going to happen. This is just, just the 15M chart. Remember, it's just the 15 minute chart, which is short term. But if you look at it from the four hour chart, it's going to show you something um, a little bit different. But look, we're still going to hit that support. And yeah, I've been talking about the support for a while. Um, I've been talking about it and you can actually see where I drew it out here. I was like, look, we're going straight down for the support. There's no denying it. We're literally going straight down on a downward slope. And you're actually seeing it here on the oscillator. And I mentioned this yesterday. I know I mentioned a lot yesterday and the day before that. I mentioned how we topped out here with this buying wave on Bitcoin and how we topped out here at this one. Notice how this one right here is smaller than this one. And that's a bearish signal. That's why the indicators show the bear right there. And it shows the downward slope because this is a bearish signal. And that's exactly what happened right after we got that bearish signal. 
as soon as we got that bearish signal, we just had started to have some selling. And now you're seeing that the selling wave is just at the beginning of the selling. So it's kind of like topping, like it's it's kind of towards the top, but it's still like near the beginning. So you're going to see it go for a little bit longer. And I reckon probably around the 15th of July, maybe uh, 20th, somewhere like that, we may have some bullish news coming in for Bitcoin in the overall crypto market. So definitely wait and prepare for that. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor, though. None of this is financial advice. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and show some other stuff here. Baby Doge only down 3.4%. Definitely not too bad, not too shabby. 3.4% for the day. Same thing with Bitcoin, Ethereum. Everything's pretty much doing a little bit, you know, a little bit on the downside, like 3 4%. Not too bad. But yeah, Baby Doge is inside the most searched ERC-20 projects on CoinMarketCap in the last seven days. It's ranked number four. So you got Ethereum celsius shiba inu and then baby doge and they're just going by market cap so that's actually pretty big for us and then you got over here baby doge is also the number two most mentioned erc20 project on twitter within the last seven days so yeah that's also pretty big especially since we're not a native erc20 project we're binance smart chain bb20 and now we're just here with the erc20 projects just because we're so high up there and we have our bridge so there's definitely some good news there but uh anyways moving on from all of this remember i'm not a financial advisor none of this is financial advice definitely go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you like the video leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you all want me to go over next also if you want to become a member of the channel definitely go ahead and do that i'll go over any crypto that the members want me to go over next as long as it's not some kind of scam coin and also remember if it's not your keys it's not your crypto so if you don't have a Ledger Nano X or a Ledger Nano S or any of these hardware wallets, get one of them. I have a link for the ledgers inside of my description. If you want to use that, I'll get a little bit of the affiliate, affiliate payments on there. So definitely shout out to you all if you all want to get a ledger. I'm going to be making a video on how to be getting Baby Doge on your ledger because a lot of people have been asking me for that for, I think, like months now, probably like five, six months. And I still haven't made that video, but it's because I bought it so long ago that like I just haven't. I just haven't touched my ledger in forever, but I'm definitely going to get back to it. I'm going to make this video on how to get baby doge on the ledger. So definitely watch out for that. But anyways, as always, I'll be back with a video.